Hey what's up guys, hopefully you're having a great day so far, and as the title suggests, I spent 50 days on Upwork trying to find out if it was worth pursuing as part-time income to pay for things in college such as food, housing, tuition, and whatever cost college may throw your way. Usually people will work at maybe a rec center or the dining hall, but if you have a high demand skill, you may have been wondering if you could possibly use your time in a more efficient manner while also learning at the same time. So that's exactly what I tried to do, and without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. So first things first, what is Upwork? So Upwork is a platform to connect freelancers with job proposals so that you can essentially hire from a pool of qualified candidates to build out your projects and whatever you may want to, such as social media marketing or software development, which is what I personally chose. And on Upwork, there are two types of projects. There are fixed projects and then there are hourly projects. So for a fixed project, a proposer will give a price and independent of the amount of hours it takes, a freelancer will complete that project. Now, obviously the price is negotiable after a certain amount of time, but it really depends on the proposer's flexibility. In comparison, an hourly project is where a freelancer bills a proposer for hourly work. So for example, in software development, It'd really just be how much time a freelancer spends writing code or researching as part of their work guidelines for a proposer. So first off, why did I choose to use Upwork in the first place? Now, when I started, I'd initially broke my ankle and I realized that I had a lot of free time on my hands and I wanted to use it more effectively. Upwork seemed to be a way where I could portray my skills in software development and then be able to bid on projects to learn more about software development as well. It also appealed to me because as a freelancer, you can charge the prices that you want in comparison to an internship where it's pretty much set in stone because it's hard to negotiate. In addition, I already had a portfolio and industry experience that I built for the sole purpose of getting an internship. But overall, the motivations are pretty clear. In college and in life, you're going to have unexpected costs and I wanted to be able to reduce the risk of those hurting me in the future. So how did I eventually get started and what point am I in now? So to be completely honest, getting started on Upwork is a bit of a grind. From the bat, you have to pay for connects to bid on these projects. So initially I put $10 down to pay for connects and I bid on a variety of projects that I thought I had expertise in. During this time, you're not getting paid but are spending time to bid on these projects in the hopes of getting hired in the future. There's a lot of competition and there's a lot of people trying to find the cheapest option possible. So you have to really be strategic on which jobs that you choose to bid to. And given that I was completely new, I had zero dollars earned and zero reviews. So honestly, people didn't trust me that much as well. Something that motivated me a lot was that 90% of Upwork freelancers had actually not earned a single dollar. I thought that as soon as I could get this one project down, I could gradually build more and more momentum to be able to build myself up to be able to make good part-time income as a student. So strategically, what helped me to bid on projects? So as I was combing through Upwork YouTube videos, one tip that really helped me out was to look for the proposer's name under their reviews. In the past, other freelancers will leave reviews for the job proposer. So if you see a repeated name under the reviews, then you can probably assume that that's the proposer's name. I think that this really makes a big difference because you're taking time out of your day to show that personal commitment rather than other people on Upwork who are just spamming connects and writing copied messages every single time. On the same kind of tune, I tried to read the job description closely and made sure to pull my experiences that closely aligned with the job proposal to show that I was qualified even though I had zero dollars and zero um, five-star reviews. Another thing that helped me out with being strategic with the small amount of connects that I had was vetting the proposers just as much as they would vet you. Because at the end of the day, these people are going to be the ones leaving reviews and you want to have people that have a good track record of communicating properly with their freelancers. Because if you get a bad reputation for yourself off the bat, it's very hard to recover from it and that's something I ultimately wanted to avoid. Another thing that really helped me out was emphasizing my proficiency in English and being in a US time zone. Now you may not think this makes a difference, but a lot of freelancers are overseas and English may not be their first language. If you're able to emphasize this to maybe people who live in the US and communicate and want to communicate properly in English, this can give you a ledge up and be able to charge the prices that you ultimately want 
in comparison to freelancers overseas. And ultimately, when it came to my prices, I knew that I had to find the balance between valuing my time and also trying to find a good reputation for myself on the website at the same time. So I'd usually bid to projects in the range of $30 to $40 per hour usually, and bid to projects where the proposers had good ratings in the past, and I would stay clear of people who had $0 spent on the app, of course people who didn't have payments verified, and other people who had zero star reviews or no reviews at all. It's incredibly important to build up your profile so that potential employers can be able to judge you based on your skills. For example, this is my current description, and I also highlighted stuff like my current degree that I'm pursuing, and also my portfolio along with industry experience. Although it's nothing crazy, I just tried to put myself out there and be explicit with potential employers so that they would be able to gauge my skill sets and see what projects they can plug me into. Ultimately, after about three days, I got extremely lucky and was able to land my first fixed price job. They utilized Python and FastAPI to build an API, and it wasn't anything crazy, but it was definitely a grind. I would say that I vastly underestimated the amount of time I expected to spend on this project, and I ended up working for about 10 to $15 an hour. But I was still incredibly grateful for this because I was able to make my first dollar in the first week and be able to get over that hump of the 90% of freelancers who were not able to make a single dollar. And because I had vetted my proposers as well, I was able to gain a five-star review and 100% job success that I could then post on my profile, which helped me build even more momentum. However, I also wanted to value my time and I was on the verge of quitting before I landed another fixed price project because I had taken the time to write another handwritten note to a project in the past when I was utilizing the small amount of connects that I had from spending $10. Because I had also vetted the second proposer as well, they were incredibly nice and offered me this fixed price project as a way to demonstrate my skills to possibly integrate me into bigger and better projects in the future. So overall, I did my best to communicate well on this project and just perform up to the standards, if not greater than the expectations of the job proposal. And I was able to gain another fixed price project under my belt. And after that, it's been pretty simple ever since. I was able to turn that second fixed price project into an hourly contract that I now work on part-time. So now for the numbers that you guys are probably waiting for, how much do I actually make on Upwork after 50 days as a freelance software developer? So after my first fixed price project, my second fixed price project, and then working hourly, I was able to make $1,990. However, this is before Upwork takes their administrative fees, which are 10%. And also I had to pay for connects and other fees. So in total, I was able to walk away with $1,775 about and given the amount of hours that I spent, which is about 70 hours, it equates to about $25 per hour. Obviously it's nothing crazy, but if you have a high demand skill like software development and are in college and maybe struggling to find things to do with your free time, it definitely helps to subsidize different costs that you will have in college. So just to finish off with some final thoughts, the number one question that you guys may have is, will I keep doing this? And for now at least, the answer is yes. As I said before, internships only last for a short amount of time, but Upwork is something where you can continually build on your skills and increase your income thresholds over time year round, which I think is an exciting prospect for anyone doing software development or social media marketing or any field you could really do on Upwork. However, being a student, there's also the argument that you're shortchanging future earnings by taking money right now, by not building projects or making startups, for example. For me right now, at least, I'm working in languages that I probably would have had to spend time learning on my own anyways. So I think it's just been a good experience to be paid to learn and make use of the free time that I have. But yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you have a great day as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.